That's that's hilarious. Uh, should we move on to the next one then? Uh, let's watch one of yours next. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We can move through one of mine. Uh, we can start with my one of my bronze we plays. It was actually a really good game, despite the fact it was in bronze tier. It was uh, my opponent was someone who was uh, bought a full Agnister deck uh, straight out of the gate, and I had no idea what any of that card. Uh, so it's just a case of like. I'm going to wait and see what happens, and then I'll figure out where I'm going to go from here. Alright, we've got the Matorigus avatar on the screen. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. This is a shout out to Nearly Not Quite Gaming, who uh, created me this neat little avatar, since we're not using our webcam right now. <coughs> okay, so this is the Galaxy deck. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're, I, I was playing Galaxy. I used this to climb all the way to Plat initially, because... Back in the back in the day when I was working for KDE, I used to play. This was like my casual go-to deck. It was good enough for winning games. I mean, it did have serious problems when you got to the top level of competitive play. But like, if you're having drinks with the R and D team, like it was a fun deck to play. You had the anime vibes with it, so you could just have a good laugh of it. And ultimately, in those sections, while some people would show up to those drink sessions with meta decks, we want to have fun. We're not there to like play a YCS level game. Uh, after a whole day of meetings or something. So Galaxy was like my go-to deck. And it's something that I really enjoy playing. And I really like the cards. I, I love all of them. I love how they work together, how they flow together. <laughs> um, one card I do dislike is the... I did end up taking the trade-ins out of the deck. Uh, but if you want to just go ahead and play it. Sure. Uh, the I'm only thing I do know... The only thing yeah. I know about your deck is stop this guy and you win unless they have this card. So I'm looking at your hand and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> My opponent, I've got no interaction whatsoever. My opponent is playing top tier at Ignister, and I'm just gonna have to let him do whatever the hell he wants, and then I'm just gonna figure it out afterwards. What am I? What do I do to get back into it? So you just go ahead and hit the uh, speed up button on this. You can kind of watch the whole combo because you're gonna see a bunch of at Ignister combos when we discuss some of our replays a little bit later. Mm. But yeah, this deck is absolutely disgusting. I don't understand why I'm not seeing more of it on the ladder. And it might just be because Eldritch uh, is causes this deck so many problems. Or is it because of the complexity of the combos in this deck? Uh, it's because if you do, like, the, the combo itself is super linear, but when you have to freestyle because you get interrupted, then it becomes really difficult to play, and it's hard to keep track of, like, what everyone does because they all have two effects. I have seen so many people throw game when they have the red guy in the... Oh, he already got rid of it. When you have the red guy in your graveyard, you can, like, negate an attack in the damage step so it doesn't cause a replay, and people just give away games because they don't do that, so... Uh, the red guy destroys the guy attacking. It destroys the guy being attacked, yeah. Uh, if, like, if you were to summon your... Oh. If you were to summon your Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon and smack this thing for 11,000, he can banish the red guy from the graveyard to pop this thing, and you'll do zero damage, and it was the damage step so you don't get a replay. Uh, okay, right. So, I also have done that before when I was about to win a game and destroyed my monster attacking. I was like, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to activate the red guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I wanted a game in Platinum 2 uh, to Sky Strikers when I was about to attack for Lethal. And, and I, the red guy popped up and said, do you want to activate the red guy? And I'm like, sure. And I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, God. Is cancel, he, cancel. He's going for 6,000 arrival. That's really funny. <laughs> this is the uh, greediest I'm play. Pulse, 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 pulse. Right. So... I read my opponent's card and I realize this is this is Towers uh, on steroids and I'm like, all right, he's a bit natty, he's been at the gym. Uh, how? What can I do to beat? Can I beat this? Is there a card in my deck that gets over us? He's unaffected by everything. And I realize that I'm going to have to caveman out of this and my only way of actually beating it is just a flat out attack over it. Episode 120, man. So it's just like, all right, we're going to... We're going to just literally pick up our, our big heavy club and we're going to hit that thing for harder than 6,000. So, we start off with a blind MST, and it pays off. Yeah, you hit a called by. I, I disagree with blind MSTs, but it worked out, so... I, well, it's a case of, like, I'm either winning this turn or I'm losing next <laughs> turn. So, we're just going to go for the blind MST. And our goal is to make prime material photon dragon. So, if you just play it through till I get to that point, uh, you'll essentially see how I get to it. Oh, no. Better. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like, my opponent makes that thing and has, like, Caught by the Grave, Effect Veiler. Yeah, a lot of stuff goes wrong. A lot of stuff goes wrong. So this gets you Soul Flare from the two tokens, right? Yes. I actually misplayed horribly in this game, and it should have killed me, but I got really lucky. Because I would have... Um, but I'll cover that in a little bit. So, yeah, Soul Flare is really strong. It lets me get back my trade-in target, which is the key card for us to win the game. 
Yeah, this is, like I said, the only way to win the game against Galaxy is to negate that right there. And then if they have this card for a follow-up anyway, you still lose. Because <laughs> there he is, this piece of garbage. <laughs> Afterglow is so good. Afterglow's kind of underrated, to be honest. So if you want to pause it for people who aren't familiar, Afterglow, when it's detached from a material, uh, you can activate it to special summon a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Or add it as a material. So I, I didn't notice a bit where you could add it as a material until I got into playing this deck a little bit later on in my ladder experience. Um, and then if you activate during the battle phase, the attack of all number monsters get double. And of course, Prime Material Photon Dragon uh, massively increases its attack based on the number of uh, XE ranks on the field, essentially. So what you do is you detach the Afterglow you go up to like 5600 and Afterglow doubles it to 10k and you swing over just about anything for, for game. And of course, even if a Prime Material Photon Dragon actually only does 50% uh, of its damage, if it doesn't have uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as a material. But the trick is that you can use Afterglow to attach the Photon Dragon to it so that you have that even if you don't necessarily start the combo. So yeah, we go for that. Opponent has Forbidden Chalice. So this is the third piece of interaction our opponent has in addition to their towers monster, but we're completely fine with this because this doesn't actually negate um, afterglow. Our afterglow, and actually uh, takes away the effect where he's going to take half damage. So our opponent was actually dead on that swing if they didn't have the AR challenge. Or were they dead? No, they were. They were going to be very, very low uh, had they done that. So I make a huge misplay here. I forget that the solar flare is only once per turn. And that's going to come back to bite me, as you'll see in just a second. I really love that, like, the fields break as you lose life points. Oh, that's a nice touch. That's a nice touch. It's extra tilting. We always like to tilt oh, our opponents. And you also pointed it at a used zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was a complete mess. A mess of a turn. Like, if you want to punch a game right back to your opponent, this is how you do it. We call it the map bell. We forget that there's not once, there's a once per turn clause on your solar flare. And then you give up two great cards, which actually would have um, put me into a position to win next turn had I not given those up. Because it would have made it so my opponent had to answer two of my big things. Because I'm going to, you'll see on my draw. But yeah, this is like the yeah, Atavista deck going again, like w one card. <laughs> and he's just going to be able, well, they, we should be honest, because uh, Ulrich, I don't know who, who they are, are able to rebuild. And yeah, they're just going to go up and uh, sweep our sweep our build. That that was a curious so, decision on their part. I didn't. Here, here's how if here's how we win the game this turn. If we hadn't made the solar flare, I only had one in the extra deck. Is you just play the uh, photon sanctuary, make the solar flare, get back galaxy knight, summon galaxy knight, get back galaxy ice photon dragon, make any rank eight, beat target opponent in the face. But because we are we were a bit cave, we were too heavy in the caveman, go try and be cave chad that we made our only solar flare. Uh, again, when it wasn't for turn. <laughs> but you drew this anyway, so who cares? This is the dumbest extender in the deck, I swear to God. No, no, it does nothing unless you have a level 5 or higher photon monster. So I literally draw blank. <laughs> because I didn't have the extra solar flare. And if you want to know how I found this galaxy deck, I actually just used the public deck search tool for galaxy deck, and I copied the first one, and this is the first iteration of it. I made some changes to it as I climbed through the ladder, but I just like wanted to jump in. I was like, yeah, I like galaxy. I how like are that. you not dead right here? Oh, yeah, we should 1,000% be dead. Like, but by the, <laughs> the grace that, by the grace of something, we somehow manage to hold on by the skin of our teeth. We hold this position. We shouldn't, under any circumstance. He has Monster be. Reborn in his hand. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, he, he also gets the uh, Dark Templar back as well. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, all the Attic Vistas are pretty low on the attack, so... Yeah, but this thing, like, this was a rank 4 or link 2 before entering battle phase. Yeah, yeah, but the link 2s that you're playing in that deck, right, are pretty low attack, so, like... Update Jammer into okay, yeah, Splash yeah. Mage. He never used okay, yeah. Access Code Talker on okay, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either doesn't have those cards or they miss lethal. Like, we get, I get lucky because I punted this game. I would have uh, I would have won on the previous turn had I just not made Soda Flare because I would have just made it this turn. Um, so yeah, opponent sets us up, and like we're all in at this point. Whatever we draw, we have to, we have to win this turn, and we're gonna go all anime on this. Like, 
I, I, I love that I can sit in my, my, my apartment by myself and shout, Ultimate Folk on stream. And it means something to me, and no one else gets to hear it or complain about it. Maxi. Yeah, we're going to take, we're gonna take the Maxi challenge. Like, this opponent came here to play some real Yu-Gi-Oh. This is the worst Maxi gonna... I've ever seen, yeah. <laughs> like, of <laughs> course, you, you're not going to pass turn. You lose if you do. Of course you're going to oh, play, it's... like. Yeah. And then we get to just make another Afterglow. We don't have another Prime material to go for it, but I find one better, because we just need to activate an effect in the battle phase, right? So oh no! Phase, you have to on. Battle phase? Oh, if you activate an effect in the battle phase, I gain a thousand additional attack, and I can attack again. And you've left a Phoenix in attack mode, my buddy. You played some bad. You played some Yu-Gi-Oh that sets me up here, and my opponent rage but they actually disconnected. So yeah, we are uh, ultimate photon stream our opponent straight out of the game. And I, I honestly got after I played this. That connection fell. That was a disconnect. Like my opponent, like I'm really grateful for this player. I don't know where he is on the. They are on the ranks right now, but. It made me get invested in Master Duel from playing through that and like actually having to think about how do I get through this? I don't know what the cards do. And it really inspired me to keep playing. Because I, I imagine if I'd have been playing like Eldlix all the time in the beginning, I'd have been like, ah, I just kind of don't want to invest in this. But you know, it's, uh, for this season's climb, probably the player I am most grateful for. My best match is that top one, but we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, that was by far my absolute. Uh, most difficult match I've played the entire season. 